Hello and welcome everyone to the next episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. And in this video, we're going to learn about using Bootstrap in WordPress. So in the previous episode, we discussed how to include the Bootstrap files and now we're going to start building components with it. All right, I'm pretty excited. Let's begin. Okay, so you can see that we have included the Bootstrap min.css and Bootstrap min.js. And now we can start building components. So what we're going to do is basically, let's just go over here and I'm going to go on to our repo, which is Aquila. Make sure to start the repository and please follow me on GitHub to support my work. And we're going to go to our resources where we have all of the references available and it can be a good source of information. We'll go to navbar. Okay, so what we want to build is basically navigation in WordPress. To save time, we're going to use Bootstrap, so we already have, so we don't spend time in adding styles to it and focus on the WordPress functionality part. So you can see that we've already got a navigation here, so all I have to do is just copy this. And then we'll come back to our header.php because the navigation should ideally reside in header uh, for the header menu. So before even we start with the header, let me just take this inside of a div and let's give it an ID of page and let's give it a class of site. And then let's also have the header, which we had pasted. We can also have another div with an ID of content. So above the header, so below the header, we'll have content. Okay, and then we can also have the class of site content. Okay, and let's just cut this and put that in the footer right over here. Great. Now let's give it an ID of masthead. And then let's give it a class of site header. And we can probably give it a role of banner for the accessibility. Now we could go ahead and paste the navigation here, but I like to keep things clean. And WordPress provides us with a an excellent function which is called get template part. Okay, so this function is basically used to include our templates. So when we are working with big projects, it's important to break your code into small chunks. The reason for this is because uh, if you are working on a big project, uh, first of all, with multiple people, you can focus on just one component and not worry about what else is going on in the rest of the code as a project. And uh, also, if you come back to it, your own code after like, a long time, maybe six months or one year, then when you have looking at the code at smaller pieces, it is more readable for you. Uh, and also, if there are any, if there are any bugs, it's easy to solve uh, it because you're just looking at a small piece of information rather than whole 1000 lines of code and then you have to go through each one of them and find out what's going on, right? Let's keep it simple. So what we're gonna do is, inside of the root, we're going to create a directory called template parts. As a convention, this is what we name it as. However, not necessary. And inside of this, we'll put a directory called header. And inside of the header, let's keep our navigation. So we'll do nav.php. Okay, and again, as we have been doing, let's give it a comment of navigation template, let's make it like header. One of the other advantage of using templates is that you can reuse them at multiple places. So like you make you make a postcard and then you can use the same postcard through, throughout the site whenever you are, you know, displaying the blog posts. Okay, our beautiful theme, Aquila. All right, so all I have to do is just copy this once one more time and just paste it here, awesome. Of course, we've got a navigation, but in PHP, ideally what you would have done is done like include ones, right? To include it or require ones for that matter. But 
since we have this function available, uh, I can just use start it from the root. So in root, I have it at template path. So I'm just going to put that here. It's inside of the header. Then it's nav.php. So you don't have to write .php over here. Okay, one of the also interesting part about uh, the get template part is that, uh, for example, if you have any slug like multiple files, for example, if you had like content home, sorry, content post dot php, let's say you had content page dot php. If you had multiple files with the same name, you could use their slugs. So something like this. So if you had to include this, so you'll write like get template part, template parts, slide, uh, and then content, and then comma, what Okay, so we may want to use that later, but just let you know that that's that's a feature that's available with it. And if you go on and check it, what's happening inside of it, you can see that it says you can use the slug and the name as well. So this basically loads the template part into the template and then provides a simple mechanism for child themes to overload reusable sections of the code inside of the themes. You can read about it. It's available in general in template. And... Um, Basically, uh, it uses your slug as well. Uh, so you can see that it's your slug, which is like content was your slug, and then the name, uh, whatever the name of that file was, right? So if you don't pass the name, then it's just going to use the slug, and then .php. Okay, so you can see that if the uh, name is not empty, then, uh, you know, if you don't pass the second parameter, which is the name like we did and in the second example I gave you, then it's going to just use the normal one, which is uh, in our case, the first one was nav.php, nav and then .php. But if you did pass the name as second parameter, then it's going to use this form, which will be the slug, like content, and then dash name, which will be post or page .php. So pretty good actually. So it's important for you to look at the core. Uh, I highly recommend the reason for this because a lot of times all the information is not available online on WordPress.org, but you have a valuable resource. You have your core right at the palm of your hand. You can just go ahead and go through it. For my case, I use command B on PHP Storm to go to the function definition. You could you could just search that function. You could go over here and do like search and you would get uh, the definition for that function where it's defined. Awesome, great. So I think uh, that's good enough for us. And then what I'm expecting is that I should see the navigation onto our front end. Let's take a look. Awesome, congratulations, you've got your navigation here. You can see the navigation is working, you've got your search and all that stuff. You minimize it, it's also responsive, so you've got your M menu also working all good. We don't have to spend time in building these things. All I have to do is just use this piece of code and use all of these classes and everything and it's built this navigation for me. Awesome, that sounds exciting. So now, in the next video, we can further discuss about something really important which would be your writing classes. So all this while we have been doing really simple things just adding whatever we want inside of a function, functions.php, right? But as a best practice I would suggest you to use the object-oriented programming which would be you know using classes and then also using singleton uh, etc. like auto loaders. I'm sure if you know PHP you would know all of these are pretty useful things and since this is an advanced custom theme development those things are going to be really useful for you and if at all if you feel overwhelmed don't worry about it. It is good to know information and, it's, and I think it will be really useful for you in the long run because that's how things are done at a large scale. Okay great. So Let's go ahead and meet in the next video. And until then, uh, do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Cody Tech.
I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.